Toronto fans are burning up their maple leaves on Twitter right now, so if you've got any marshmallows, now's the time. Let's talk about my Maple Leafs vs. Blue Jackets Game 5 play and review for August 9th. Now, Columbus wins this one 3 to nothing. They take the series 3 to 2. They're heading up against Tampa Bay next um, in the actual playoffs, who may be without Steven Stamkos and Victor Hedman, um, two of their top players, uh, at least for the beginning of the matchup. We'll see how that all shakes down. Now, um, to start this game, Toronto took out Nick Robinson, their 18-year-old um, superstar rookie there, and they put in Andreas Johansson, um, or Andreas Johnson, excuse me, who has been out since February with a knee injury, and he was a bit of a ghost out there. He had maybe one good opportunity all night, and yeah, he looked really rusty. Now, the Blue Jackets... Um, they, Wierenski and Murray were questionable, but they played. Um, you can tell Wierenski still has an issue with his hand. He didn't take any hard slap shots, but he had a terrific game nonetheless. And, uh, Corpiusello started for them in net. The Blue Jackets played a typical John Tortorella defensive suffocating style of game like they did in game one and just forechecked the daylights, and cycled the, the hell out of Toronto. So much that only one of Toronto's lines could really get out of their own zone. The Maple Leafs, um, to start the game, and for most of it, uh, put together a super line of Tavares, Matthews, and Marner. And whenever they were on the ice, they were dominating for the most part. The ice was just tilted. But otherwise, the other Leaf lines, including that fourth line, which has been consistently good, just weren't. They were like one and done in the offensive zone and would usually get hemmed in their own zone. They, they, they you know, they would just, <laughs> one after another, they would try to clear it by setting up the boards. And the Blue Jackets had like a couple of defenders just stapled to them who would just take the puck, block it, put it back in. And, you know, you just hit cycle, repeat. <laughs> Pardon the pun. And it's like, hey, man, you, you look, as a Leaf fan, you're just like, just flip the thing in the air. Just get it out of the zone. <laughs> That's all you got to do. Stop putting up the boards. They have guys there all the time. But uh, I'm not taking anything away for, from Columbus. Um, so many of their players had a good game. Um, besides Wierenski and, and Corpia Salo, like, Foody had a terrific game today. Uh, and so did Dubois. He had a pretty good day, game as well. Now, let's, let's just jump... Um, Straight to the first goal where Wierenski gets this one. He, it's, it's a wrist shot from the blue line, which gets deflected by Tyson Berry, a Maple Leaf player. That's right. And it's, it's, there's nothing Glenn, uh, Frederick Anderson could have done about that. It's 1-0. Uh, and then in the beginning of the second period, um, Tyson Berry gets uh, hit like three times in a row and has trouble getting up. And then he disappears for the rest of the game. So Toronto's left with five defensemen. Don't forget, Toronto's also missing their by far their best defensive defenseman um, in uh, Jake Muzzin, who, who was sitting in the stands watching this one. So that uh, wasn't a good thing for them for the rest of this game. Mark Marinson, again, was playing, and he has his ups and his downs, but he's not really an NHL-caliber defenseman. Um, he had some good moments in this game, but uh, let's get to the second goal and you'll see what I mean. <laughs> because um, the Columbus makes it 2-0 uh, around 8.20 in the second. And this was... A lot of people were to blame on this one. Leafs, uh, the puck goes into Toronto zone. Um, and oh, the whole team, with the exception of Martin Marincin, goes for a line change. Unbelievable. Jackets are like, what? <laughs> Foodie gets on that puck before Martin Marinson can get to it. Marinson backs off, then sees a couple of Blue Jackets who are charging hard into the slot. So he's got to make a quick decision. Do I aggressively attack the shooter or do I take away the passing zone? He doesn't choose either. He kind of slowly backs closer to the goalie. Foodie puts it in between. Throws it on that goes right between Frederick Anderson's pads. Oh, um, a bad goal for him, and it's two nothing. So you could blame that one on on the goalie, on the lone defenseman, 
and the four other players who all decided for to go for line change at the same time. Just really, God, that was just hard to watch. Not taking away anything from Foodie, he, like you know, Columbus is they're just hard, fast um, four checkers. The whole team has urgency. They don't. It doesn't seem like they're breathing half the time. And um, Foodie just puts it on that. <laughs> Why not, right? Anderson was pretty surprised, too, to see that Martin Marinson was left alone on that. Now, uh, we jump to the third period. Uh, it's kind of more of, of the same. I mean, Keefe uh, put together, uh, split up the, the big line to get some of the other lines going, and it worked to some extent, really. They came alive a little bit, uh, but then he had to put the big line back together, um, for the last half of that period, mostly. Uh, Leafs pulled the goalie with about 2.50 uh, left in the game. And they just couldn't pull the same game for ma Magic out of, out of a hat, could they? Um, Nick Foligno got his hand on the puck and put it in the empty net. And, in the empty net and, and Bob's your uncle there. That's the end of it. Uh, now, when it comes to shots at the end of the first period, they were 7-6 to six for Columbus. Um, at the end of the second, they were 13-8 for Toronto. At the end of the third, they were 14-7 for the Maple Leafs. Now, um, the box score, the, uh, the shots on goal for the whole game were 33-22 for Toronto. So it's not like they weren't getting pucks to the net. Um, it just only that super line had any serious chances. Tavares mixed, missed like three or four beautiful opportunities um, to even put, you could have easily put them ahead in this one. Um, Face-off percentage was 52-48 for Toronto. Power play, Columbus was 0 for 2. Toronto was 0 for 1. Now, the refs um, on, in this one, I think one of them was McCauley, Wes McCauley, are known not to um, give out many penalties. Only really obvious ones. Um, that kind of game, you know, if, you know if, if penalties were called accordingly, probably would have favored Toronto. Um, so you know how desperate that one power play was for them, and of course they didn't cash in on it. Now the penalty minutes were four to two uh, for the Maple Leafs. Hits were 28-22 for Columbus. Blocks were 16-14 for the Maple Leafs. Giveaways 14 to 13 for Toronto. Their defense gave away the puck, so they just couldn't. They gave away the puck in their own zone so many times. This is where they really missed a player like Jake Muzzin, I tell you. Now, um, some of the goalie stats. Corpia Salo obviously got the shutout, saved all 33 shots. Um, Gl uh, Glenn Anderson. Uh, Frederick Anderson saved 19 of 21 with a 905 save percentage. He let in at least three bad goals in this series. Um, I'm not going to staple the whole thing to him. It's the team defense as well. And um, the fact that their usual strength, which is depth through the entire lineup, uh, didn't show up at all for that last game and for some of the other, uh, the other ones as well. Now the goals, um, Wierenski was uh, unassisted on that first one, except by Tyson Berry. Uh, in the third period, the Liam Fuji goal was assisted by Nyquist and Jones, and Nick Foligno's goal uh, on the empty netter was unassisted. Some interesting stats that I have for you right here, um, courtesy of Sports uh, Sport Logic. Uh, overall shots in this series were 156 to 137 for Toronto. Um, slot shots were 76-61 for the Maple Leafs. Uh, ozone possession was 34-05 to 27-19 for Toronto. Zone entries 211 to 162 for the Maple Leafs. Uh, rush chances was, were 43 to 39. For Columbus, cycle chances, oddly, were 51-39 for the Maple Leafs. Forecheck chances, 20-11 to for Columbus. Yeah, goals, 10-9 to for Toronto. Defense wins games in the playoffs. What's What can you say more about that? Toronto's got some tinkering to do. Um, they need to get another Jake defenseman, at least in that defense. But uh, we're not going to ramble on, on that. That's another video. I would love to hear from you Maple Leaf fans, and especially you Blue Jacket fans as well, in the comment section down below. Tell me what you thought of this game, this series, um, what Toronto's going to do next, what Blue Jackets' chances are against Tampa. And that's it. That's all. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Be kind to each other out there, and I'll see you soon.